Good day. Today's talk is about the production function and the theory of the firm for the contemporary economics presentation for the history of economic thought. So the production function is something that is enabled by capitalists or entrepreneurs by using inputs available to them, processing the inputs in order to reach uh, economic output. The input variables that this production function consists of is mainly land, labor, and capital, which they use as variables to generate or add value to a product or service for economic output for consumption. The production function is, as stated, the relationship between inputs and outputs. And these inputs are the factors of production, which is classified as land, labor, and capital, which was mentioned. And land consists of all natural resources from the earth. Um, the capitalists take these inputs and use it to create uh, different production components, uh, such as land, which is the price paid to acquire land. Uh, is turned into rents and then the price paid for labor is in form of wages from the capitalists and then capital of course buildings machinery and equipment uh, it's not used for the own sake but for the contribution of production and the price that the capitalist or the entrepreneur pays for capital is in the form of interest from the firm Regarding inputs, we have fixed and variable inputs, whereas a variable input is an input that can be varied in the short run of the production function, and a fixed input is an input that cannot vary in the short run of production function. In the long run of the production function, it is the shortest amount of period of time required to alter the amounts of all inputs, as mentioned, used in the production process. Whereas in the short run, the long, it's the longest period of time during which at least one of the inputs used in the production process cannot be varied. As for the short run of the production function, there always has to be one fixed uh, input, whereas in the long run, uh, all inputs tend to become variable over time. But more on this when we do the comparison between the long and short run curves. Obviously, the costs, as briefly mentioned earlier, the firm has to buy factor inputs, which will obviously cost the firm money or costs. And these as variables also come in forms of two fixed or variables. And the fixed costs are costs that are not related directly to production, such as rent, rates, admin costs. They can obviously change, but they do not have a direct relation to output. For example, if a factory's rent for the premises goes up, the company will have to pay more, but it's not uh, something that's directly going to have an effect on the output or the product that the company produces. Uh, the cost will not be uh, directly related to output. Whereas variable costs are costs which are directly related to variations in output uh, obviously raw materials primarily, whereas if a firm creates steel bars or security company and the price of steel would go up, obviously that would have a direct impact to the costs of the product as the company now has to pay more for their raw product and then obviously factor in the costs to the final product. These uh, relationships will be important later on in the study to understand the curves that will be presented. Um, but the total costs is the sum of all costs incurred in the production. And they, the total cost consists out of fixed costs plus the variable costs, hence uh, the total cost. The average cost is the cost per unit of output. And the equation for that is the total cost divided by the number of output of products or simply output or the quantity. Marginal costs is the cost of one or more fewer units of production, whereas it's the total costs minus total cost. 
of the quantity of units minus one, then we will find the marginal cost as one or more units or one or more less units are produced. Costs also differ in the long and short run production function of the firm by diminishing marginal returns, which we'll explain a bit later in the presentation. Uh, diminishing marginal returns in the short run results from adding successive quantities of variable factors to a fixed factor. Recall there always has to be one fixed factor in the short run. In the long run, increases in capacity can lead to an increase in decreasing or a constant returns to scale of production. Analysis of the production function in the short run. Uh, in the short run, as mentioned, there should always be at least one uh, fixed factor in constant supply, but all other factors of production should be capable of being changed in the short run. This reflects ways in which firms respond to changes in output uh, from consumer demand. Uh, this can increase or decrease output using more or less some factors, but are likely to be easier to change than others. The increase in total capacity is only possible in the long run, as we'll see later in the total cost curve in the long run. Uh, therefore, the short run production function shows the maximum quantity of output that can be produced by a set of inputs, assuming the amount of at least one of the input remains unchanged. We'll see in the production possibility frontier the combination of the set of inputs to reach uh, a, a, a set of outputs or product. In the graphs that follow, we'll see the total product curve, which is a representative line of the amount of output as a function of the amount of variable input. Thereafter, the marginal change is the change in the total product due to a single unit of change in the variable output, whereas the marginal product can be derived by taking the change in quantity and the change in labor. Thereafter, average product or labor productivity is the total output divided by the quantity of the variable input. Therefore, average product is the quantity of output divided by labor. The production function in the short run of the firm states that output is a function of labor and capital and note that K bar represents a fixed number of units of capital. Uh, recall we mentioned that in the short run there always has to be one fixed variable of input. In this case it is capital that is cannot be changed uh, due to production function where uh, labor and quantity are variables, capital is not, and this represents it in this production function equation. As to sum up, output is a function of labor and a fixed amount of capital. This graph diagrammatically represents the short run production function where from the previous slide capital is fixed and the output is only a function thereof as can seen that the total output curve at C would be the maximum that the uh, firm can produce with a given output and labor. At point B, there's a steady increase uh, of productivity with a combination of output and labor. After point C, you can see that output starts to drop a bit, but that is due to a law of diminishing marginal returns, which we will get to later on in this presentation. In the long run, by contrast to the short run, all variables, uh, all factors of production are by, by definition become variable as input and factor costs can all change over time, like in the short run where there has to be fixed costs. Uh, Suppose you would like to describe all possible combinations for uh, labor and capital that would give rise to a particular level of output can all change in the long run as not necessarily in the short run. In the long run, of course, all inputs become variable and we use isoquants uh, to study the production 
combinations and decisions. And an isoquant is a curve showing that all possible input combinations capable of producing a given level of output. Isoquants are downward sloping are downward sloping, which states that if greater amounts of labor are used, less capital is required to produce a given level of output. Here is a typical isoquant map where we can see that units of capital is on the vertical axis and units of labor on the horizontal axis. Whereas at point A, for 40 units of labor and 20 units of capital, we can reach an output of 100 units. Obviously, moving up to the right hand side on the isoquant map, uh, the firm can reach uh, Q2 and double production. Therefore, but in order for the firm to be able to do that, they need to increase uh, both units of capital and units of labor. Whereas if only capital is increased, they will have to decrease units of labor. And then only if labor is increased, the units of capital will go down. So it have to be a gradual increase in both factors to reach Q2, which is at this moment in time unattainable for the firm unless they add more units of labor and capital. The law of diminishing returns states that if other inputs are fixed, the increase in output from an increase in the variable input must eventually decline. Uh, therefore, an increase in one factor of production, such as labor, holding one or other factors fixed, after some point, the product or output must diminish, as can be seen in the graph on the right-hand side. Whereas marginal product with a variable input carries on to increase at to a certain point and then must again diminish and productivity will go down.